Blessings, beloved. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me, saith the Lord. I just watched a shocking video. It's shocking in one aspect and not in another, in that <clears throat> all the way along the Guardi have been asked to implement um, unlawful restrictions and regulations that have no, they're unlawful because they have no grounding in law and they go against many rights as citizens. I watched a recent video where a member of the Guardi said, we don't have any power to ask you, in other words, it's not our role, it's not our office, to ask you for an exemption, a proof of an exemption. They can't do that. So what about all of the people who didn't prove they have an, an exemption and got fined? How many of them are there? Do they get reimbursed? Do they get refunded? Do they get compensation for the time it took them to go through that process? W what about all of these errors that were made that now a member of Angarda Shukon is coming forward and saying shouldn't have happened? What about this? What about this? What about the knock-on negative effects of that? Can they even calculate the knock-on negative effects? So now they're saying, well, right, well, we can't enforce that. What's amazing to me is that not only have the Guardi been trying to enforce regulations, but in doing so have neglected their actual role, which is to uphold the rights of the citizen. That is their primary role. That is their priority as Guardi, is to uphold the rights of the citizen of the state of Ireland. That is their primary role. So therefore, they have to know the laws in and around this matter. And when they say, OK, we can't ask you for an exemption letter. OK, they've admitted that. That's good. That's progress. But if they, they're then saying, we don't uphold your rights. By saying, it's the person in the premises can say yay or nay as to whether you can come in or not. If you fail to wear a mask. You see, saying failure to wear a mask or you're required to wear a mask must suppose one or more things. It must suppose that the mask can be confirmed by the premises, by the people running the business as being merchantable quality. And that, secondly, that it at least does no harm to the wearer. There are two things that the, neither the guard nor the business can confirm. If they cannot confirm either of these things and they are relying solely upon um, so-called experts from other states who have been inconsistent all the way along with their recommendations. The CDC by saying masks don't help you, then they do help you, then they don't again. So if these people are unreliable and they're openly unreliable and admittedly People have seen that they're unreliable, in that they're inconsistent. If you're inconsistent, you're unreliable. So if somebody says, um, well, the CDC came out and said, or the WHO came out and said, coming out and saying something isn't in and of itself actual proof of that thing being a fact. So when somebody comes out and says, you've got to wear a mask because diddly diddly, well, show us how you've proved diddly diddly. Show us the reasoning behind you coming forth and saying you've got to do this, that and the other thing. Merchantable quality means fit for purpose. There is research out there that shows that masks, I've been saying this from the start, that masks do not reduce the instance of post-operative infection. So even when surgeons wear the mask, it cannot be shown that it's of any benefit in reducing the instance of infection. Why do you think this is? Because it, it has nothing to do with the mask and everything to do with the immunity of the person. It has nothing to do with the mask and everything to do with the, con the condition and the, and the health of the person. Their immune system. And that can be, that can be clearly shown. That can be empirically evidenced. I can, I can evidence that myself. I have studies on that from institutions. So I've done my research, have the guards done theirs? I've done my research, have the businesses done theirs? <clears throat> Collectively, there have been institutions, not just when somebody came out and said, oh, pandemic, but over the last number of decades, there has been a cumulative 
studies, there have been accumulative studies done and information has been accumulated. And that information shows us that over the course of those number of decades, whether it be one or two, <clears throat> it's at least one to my recollection, people have shown that wearing, even the surgeons wearing those masks, doesn't reduce the instance of post-operative infection. And they're the ones who wear them the most regularly in their course of business. Okay? So if they don't, if they can't be shown to do that, then they can't be shown to be fit for purpose. And nobody can establish that they're fit for purpose. Therefore, they're not of merchantable quality. Therefore, furthermore, businesses can't say that they're a condition of service and Gardaí can't enforce the use of them. Neither can they support a business who's trying to enforce the use of them. They've got to support the rights of the customer. That's their job. That's their brief. That's their office. They have got to uphold the law and uphold the rights of the individual. Not the arbitrary and whimsical say-so of so-called health authorities. That term in and of itself, health authority, is a contradiction in terms. The health um, industry is a service and not an authority. Whilst they do have regulatory aspects, as you would expect, they're never an authority. They can never say you have to do this or have to do that. They don't have that remit. That's not how the organs of state operate. They're a health service, HSE, health service executive. They're not an authority. They never were and they never will be an authority. Now, what I do want to say to you is this. It is an offence for a guard to fail to uphold your rights. It is him committing an offence. If, if it comes to his knowledge that your rights are being denied you and he does nothing about that, he has committed an offence. He has breached his office. If this happens consistently and conspiratorially, then all, the, all you can conclude is that there's been a usurpation of powers. That's no small thing. That's a usurpation of powers. That's a treasonous, collective, collaborative effort internationally to usurp authority over the Western world. This is no small matter. I want to clarify the point because I've made a very serious statement and I stand by it. The Sale of Goods and Services Act 1980 states that a condition of service cannot be unfair or unreasonable and you cannot even sell a product unless it can be shown to be of merchantable quality. Do you know the way like children's toys go through certain regula regulatory and uh, testing? They go through testing. That's so they can be shown that you know the child mightn't swallow a piece of the toy or something like that okay that's to protect the child so until that can be shown as safe tick it can't be sold so it's no surprise that there, nobody wants in the pharmaceutical industry to indemnify anybody against their products they're always disclaiming has side effects take at your own risk Side effects, your own risk. Side effects, your own risk. But then the manipulation starts. Then the arm twisting. But if you don't do this, you might be denied that. This might happen in the future. What do you think about this? Always testing the water, always dipping the toe. What do you think about this? How, you know, how much leverage do we have if we run with that? How many people are going to raise up their hand and say, we don't want that? And this is what Facebook has become. This Facebook feed thing has become an information gathering thing operation so that they can see well who's going to be the one who speaks out who are who are those who aren't going to speak out and just go with the flow so they're doing their own separating who's going to talk who's who's just going to walk the walk that we tell them to walk and for a long time the only way they had of gathering information was the confessional booth in the catholic church largely when you went in and confessed your sins Now, if you can't be forced 
to use a product that is not of merchantable quality, fit for purpose, safe, if they cannot say at least this product will do you no harm while you're wearing it in my establishment for the period of time I designate that you wear it and in the way I designate that you wear it, then they can't make it a condition of service. Nor can they tell you. I mean, they can have a dress code. Don't come in your bikini. But they can't tell you to put on a mask. It's unequivocally has been stated that it is categorically not personal protective equipment. So they came up with this story when it protects other people. Now they're saying there's no evidence that this thing is contagious at all. If there's any asymptomatic spread of this thing. So if they don't have the evidence and they cannot stand behind it, if the Guardi want to wash their hands of it now, all of a sudden, say, no, we don't have, and then they want to put it on the business. And this is what they've been doing from the start. Relevant people. Well, this is Jimmy's bus. He can say who comes on it or not. This is Anne's restaurant. She can say who comes in or not. That's the Guardi breaking the law in saying that because they're not giving you the whole picture. You cannot be told you can't come in here on discriminatory grounds. They can't say you can't come in here because you have a health issue. And at the same time, they can't tell you to prove that you have that health issue. So that means the Guardian have to actually inform the restaurant that they can't prevent you coming in. That's when the Guardian need to step in and protect your rights. Not say, well, it's up to the business. That's breaking the law. They're breaking the law. That's illegal, unlawful misinformation right there. If you're discriminating against somebody because they, because they can't or don't want to because of their religious beliefs, wear a mask, then you are breaching the Sale of Goods Act 1980. Read Article 39 and 40. Read Article 39 and 40. It tells you that nobody can discriminate against you for, on the basis of religious belief and it's, I would not wear a mask based on my beliefs. I also have a condition with my sinus that would exclude me from wearing a mask. It should, everybody should be excluded from wearing them because they, because they don't, they're not of, mer they can't show that they're of merchantable quality. There's no empirical evidence over a period, over a period, acceptable uh, period of time long enough to actually ascertain as to whether they do you harm or not. So how these so-called medical authorities can come out and say otherwise shows the disingenuous nature of their advice. It's disingenuous. How could they possibly know whether they're wearing the mask all day long when you're working is doing long-term damage or not to your brain? How can they know that? How can they know it? Just by looking at you. Now you're grand. Sure, look, you're still walking around. How do they know that you're not hypoxic? It has been reported that people have been keeling over wearing those masks, showing up in the ER after wearing the masks. Just no surprise. Out of breath hypoxic in a hypoxic state fallen over hypoxic means lacking oxygen i think just make sure i'm using the term correctly very important that we use these terms correctly this condition in which the body or region of the body is deprived of adequate oxygen supply at the tissue level even okay so on garda shiakana have to ensure that our rights are upheld correct Correct. We can all agree upon that. That's their primary function. Now, if they fail to do that, they're failing to do, do their job. If they start to advise people opposite to their office, then they're committing a crime. That's deliberate misinformation. Now, they may be put up to it, but they need to know their office. They need to know their office. Can't say, well, Sarge told me. Superintendent told me. Okay, but Sarge and Superintendent. 
don't hold your office you do and you should know it you should know your brief just like when I go out onto the street I'm supposed to preach from the Bible not from my own understanding I can reword but then I have to be able to define that rewording I have to have a comprehensive understanding of that rewording but the fundamental basic in interpretation the basic message has to be accurate according to the Bible otherwise I wouldn't be doing my job and I would fall under condemnation because I would be giving out misinformation about my God and so they're not to give out misinformation about their office or about Irish law so no the power does not lie with um, like you're not talking about a pub here where somebody's walking up to the door drunk you see they bring these things in through the intoxicating liquor act they bring these things in to deal with drunks and then they try to extend them to everyday life and gen the general public and it just doesn't work that way because there are constitutional provisions and protections in place to to govern the upholding of um, our rights as Irish people and these powers have been instituted by God he is in control if you haven't realized that yet you need to he is sovereign he's almighty and so when somebody says a member of Angarda Shiakana says I'm glad they've admitted that they can't be policing exemptions and this and that letter from your doctor and things like this that's hideous I'm sure the ability to get to your doctor now is so hindered how would you even come up with a letter how could you, do you see what I'm saying how would you be able to get one together it's just a horrible system and these big numbers like six months in prison and two thousand euros in the middle of a, of a, of a recession the worst recession that's hit in the, how, however long The point is that the guards are absolutely supposed to know their office. I shouldn't. Job logs have to. I should know. I accept that. Ignorance is no excuse in law and we should know our rights. So therefore, I encourage you to buy a constitution and read it. You can, get, you can actually get it on your app store. It's only a few euros. If you have the few euros. Some people don't. Um, you should be able to get in your bookshop I, I went about buying it here in Wexford Town and one of the bookshops didn't have it I didn't get around to trying the other I won't mention any names the point is that if you're going to take on the role of a guard and you're going to fill your office you need to know how people should be how their rights should be protected now in most cases it's a civil matter between a citizen and the public if there's been a disagreement that's actually a civil matter and the guards don't have any jurisdiction totally accept that but the way they're washing their hands of this one isn't acceptable because it is discriminatory to prevent somebody from using your business on the basis of a health issue that's a discriminatory action you cannot have a condition of service that is unfair or unreasonable you cannot establish uh, that it isn't unfair or unreasonable if you can't show that wearing a mask is harmless if you cannot show that it's harmless then you shouldn't be making it a condition of service if you have made it as a condition of service you need to change that and the guards need to police that it's that simple give us back a little bit of dignity you need to give us back our rights you need to reimburse our rights I think at this stage most people would be happy enough with that I mean let alone reimbursing them the fines and things like that people need to be able to go about their daily living they need to be able to engage services they need to be able to engage their buying their spuds in Tesco or going to Dunn's they need to be able to go to the bank they need to be you can't be expecting old people on walking sticks to go around with uh, face masks on struggling for breath it's horrible to watch watching old Mary 
who worked all her life, now she's on a pension, struggle up the hill on her Zimmer frame with a mask on. It's hideous. I've never seen anything as vile. Young children, mammy skipping down the road, walking down the road pushing a pram, and the baby with the, the young child with a mask on, and then another one in tow with their mask on. And I'm just thinking, what are these people doing to our our fellows, our neighbours? My heart is going out to them. I'm thinking, what are they actually inheriting here? This is hideous. Sorry, and my knee hit off the drawer. This is hideous. We need to we need to actually step in and say, guards, come on, you're not doing your, your job here. Now you might be coming under pressure from this uh, superior and that superior, but your superior are the citizens. It's we the people for the people. We give you your power. And our power comes from God. Okay, so we assign that power to people. It's not saying we have power over the guard. Eh? It's not that kind of an attitude. It's simply saying we assign you your office. You do the job, you get paid for it. And it's so that society is run properly. You know, often people will try to blow something out of proportion by saying, you work for us, the people, because we pay your wages. That's not incorrect. That shouldn't get your back up as a guard to hear that. Now, it's different if somebody says it in a different tone and a different attitude. They, you know, in fairness to them, they might have heard it in different ways being said to them before. And But they have to try to deal with every occurrence and every instance afresh and not allow those things to get in on them, because it can. So you have to be sensitive to that. They're coming up against this kind of resistance on a daily basis. And it can kind of callous them a bit. And they do have to listen to their superiors. And there is a dynamic there. And they do want to just go with the flow so that they can have an easy life and pay, put their kids through school. But at some stage, we the public have to step in and defend the guards and say, we're not asking our guards to do that. That is not acceptable. That's not lawful. You can't be asking the lads to go out and do this or the girls to go out and say that. You can't be putting them up to that. Because it's their office. It's their house. It's their children's food that you're putting in jeopardy. You're putting their livelihood in, at, at jeopardy here. So at what stage do you say, no, we're not going to send them out to do this and that and the other criminal activity. We're going to say, right, that's your office. You do say this, you don't say that, you don't say that. Don't put them up to doing things that are blatantly unlawful to further your agenda because Mr. and Mrs. Pharmacy want to get rich. We're not buying into it. We're not stupid. We're not fools. And so I encourage you to read Sale of Goods. It might be Sale of Goods and Services Act. I'll double check for you right now. Sale of Goods and Services Act it is yes, it's Sale of Goods and Supply of Services Act, 1980. Section 30, 30, 39 and 40. Subject to Section 40 in every contract for the supply of a service under undertakings as to where the supplier is acting in the course of business, the following terms quali quality of service are implied. That supplier has the necessary skill to render the service. But we haven't seen that with the relevant people asking people for exemption letters. They don't have the, rel the relevant skills to render the service. And a minister, I mean a minister should know better, he should know the law before he starts going telling people that are relevant in something that shouldn't be considered relevant in. B. That he will supply the service with due skill, care and diligence. Well, we haven't seen that. You can't have, you can't have not, not have the skill and then supply the skill. And the care and diligence that would come as a result of having this skill and caring about what you're doing. C. That where materials are used, there will be sound and reasonably fit for the purpose for which they are required. Now, how can they confirm or deny that if they haven't got the, the right skill? A guard can't do it. Mr. and Mr. Tesco, Mr. and Mrs. Tesco can't do it. Mr. and Mrs. Dunn's, they might be corporations now at this stage, probably are. It belongs to the bank, I don't know. 
but just so to speak Mr and Mrs food shop down the road they can't be expected to ask people to relinquish their rights to use their surface so governments shouldn't be asking people to do these things this is treasonous activity this is serious stuff it's right here black and white under the sale of goods and services act provision of services act 1980 d that where goods are supplied under the contract they will be of merchantable quality within the meaning of section 14 subsection 3 of the act of 1893 way back when they knew this was a good way to practice business they're just abandoning it now inserted by section 10 of this act okay and i encourage you to read section 40 as well so i hope this helps you it's Sale of Goods and Supply of Services Act, 1980, Section 39, Subsection A, B, C and D, all you need to know. And the guards need to know this too. And I have made efforts previously to show this to people. I wrote a letter to Tesco, I showed them these sections and they haven't bothered me since. And I do appreciate that. But I still see people walking around Tesco with masks on. And that bothers me. Old people, infirm people, frail people, who we should be embracing and not isolating. People who struggle to breathe, stick down on your face. So who, who is a business to tell you you can't come in here and eat your grub? When you can't eat your grub with a mask on anyway. You have to take the thing off. So what's the point of putting it on? I saw people, I was sitting in the bullring in Wexford Town the other day. And I'm sitting there in the bullring. I'm looking at people, drinking their beer. Close proximity. Right? Then sticking on a mask to win and get a refill. I thought, what is going on? What are they doing? I actually stood on a bus that belongs to Wexford Bus and they told me, stand back, two metres is the distance. You can't be two metres from somebody on the bus. Unless one is that way down the aisle and the other is up this way. You can't side to side be two metres from somebody on the bus. You certainly can't get on the bus and be two metres from the driver. I've been pointing this out from the start. Gently. And what happened? I get summonses, wrong, wrong, wrongful, unlawful summonses to court. I get, I, they actually tell me to leave the area. They give me a public aid uh, order to uh, Section 8 of the Public Criminal Justice Public Order Act 1994. An order on that, on the basis of that, to leave the area when I was on private property. So, civil matter on private property, then they tell me to leave a public area. I mean, they're just mixing, mashing, hashing it all together there to do whatever they want to do. They're not even upholding their officer, acting within their jurisdiction, or upholding the rights of the citizen. They're just doing whatever they can to get this thing over the line. And keep, keep those quiet, the ones that are talking out, who know what they're talking about. Keep them quiet, keep them down. Shush them while we do this. Just kick it down the road, kick it down the line. But God is not mocked. He's not mocked. Who do they think they are? I mean, this just shows the disingenuous nature of pharmacy. Of Big Pharma. Of the, of the WHO. Of, of the CDC. 
it just completely exposes the whole thing. They mock you. And then they play their part, right? We put on the mask, we go in here, then it's hanging off the ear. And then everybody on the, in the street and everybody's out in the street eating their dinner and da, 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 da. it's a mockery folks. And you can be sure, oh look the where the that's when during the pandemic back way back when when they had the bollards out there because people had to eat outside look look during the pandemic there see look at the holes they had to be filled in with cement look they're still there on the path oh look 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 they'll be using it in years to come pictures of it props the where it was cemented on the ground to give people the impression that god is an absentee landlord that doesn't take care of his creatures And that's what they've done before with this flu and that pandemic and this plague and that thing. It's the same gig and it's done generationally and cyclically to keep big pharma lie going. The big sorcery deception going. Why? Because it dumbs you down and sends you to hell. Now you can wrap this any way you want. You can use fancy language. But at the end of the day we have limited time to make these points. So I'm making them quickly and to the point. Making the most of the time because the days are evil. And I'm angry. And I've right to be angry. But I love you. That's why I'm angry. because I see what's being done and it's not just here in Wexford Town it's all throughout the Western world all throughout the earth and they've done this in a slow burner but it is as hideous and as unfounded as it has been Jesus Christ is the great physician he's not absent and he told us how to steward our bodies properly I've written a book Right? They're, you know, I'm not a perfect man, but I've done my best efforts to compile what I believe are the best ways to steward your body well. Based on my research. The book is called The Raw Ideal. And they talk about you have to have, take control of your health. Well, you can take control of your health by making yourself sick. That means you have bad health. But ultimately, being healthy is doing less. It's not taking a whole lot of concoctions of drugs and chemicals that give you a certain uh, effect, but have much more negative effects as a result of having taken them. Just like the buzz you get from drinking alcohol, it's short-lived, you're dehydrated, you eat loads of bad food on the way home and to take out, you get up the next day, you have a hole in your wallet, and you stink the high heaven of alcohol and you have a hangover. Then you're looking for the cure. What does it get more of this chemicals? Why? Because you've defiled your body and now your body's crying out for those chemicals just to... Re re because it incorporated these chemicals whilst it was recalibrating, defiling the body. Then the body needs these chemicals to feel that way. Otherwise it has to recalibrate again to um, balance the body without these chemicals and that's why withdrawals happen. Well, most people don't like the withdrawal so they avoid the withdrawal and continue to def to take the chemical with substance whether it's alcohol, heroin, marijuana or prescription drugs, painkillers. People can get addicted to painkillers. The far big pharma is sorcery. It's sorcery. And big supplement isn't far behind. You need a thimble full of nutrients 
in a year. A thimble. You know the little metal thing that you use for stitching? A thimble full of nutrients per year. Micronutrients, that is. A thimble. Yet they sell big jugs and jars of things. Now vitamin C is different because vitamin C is a small particle so um, we don't store it because of its small the small nature of the particle it permeates the organs and can't be stored in the same fashion as other larger nutrients so that's why you have to take vitamin C on an ongoing basis to keep up that amount to keep an amount in the body but most foods whole foods have a sufficient vitamin C So, largely, big pharma is unnecessary. Largely, big supplement is unnecessary. Eat your grub, have correct macronutrient ratios, and you'll be fine. Fast every now and again to alleviate the strain on your digestive system and allow your body to go in and detox and heal. And that's it. Keep your fat low. Don't be, don't be carbohydrate counting. That's bad practice. Keep your fat low. You, you have fat on your body because you're eating fat. It's that simple. Do you see the way you're lied to and lied to and lied to and lied to and lied to? Why? To keep you a slave to Big Pharma, Big Supplement. And as I said earlier to you, if you're going to get part of the story and you're told that's the full story, well then you've been deceived by omission. The mission is by leaving something out that would have given you the full picture. And it's that simple, folks. I mean, it's that simple on the surface. <laughs> it's infinitely more complicated. And that's why we rely on God. Because he knows all things. And we're just little creatures. Right? So, no, you can't go to another man to give you full understanding or complete understanding. But we rely on the word of God. And he said, fast and, he said, fast and pray. He said his word is more important to us than our actual physical food. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that uttereth forth that comes out of the mouth of God. That's his written word. So no, no guards, you can't be doing that. You can't be telling businesses that they have carte blanche to tell somebody they can't come in to engage their service on the basis of not wearing a mask. You can't do that. If you can't prove that it's of merchantable quality or at, at least prove that it will at least do no harm as is the Hippocratic Oath. Now, I don't encourage uh, the taking of oaths or swearing, um, but what I do encourage is good practice. And that's one thing that's in the Hippocratic Oath that is accurate and good and true. At least do no harm. You strive to at least do no harm. Because we're fallen and corrupt men and we accept that. We're going to make mistakes. But to keep making the same mistake over and over again, it's no longer an accident. It's no longer a mistake. So there's a price you pay. If you want the pain rid of, you pay a price, and that's your side effects. There is an inescapable pain that will last forever in hell. Big Pharma don't have anything for that. They contribute to it.
You deceive the whole world by your sorceries. That's what pharmaceuticals means. Sorceries. The Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew root of the word is pharmakia. That means sorcery or drugs or poison. That's what it means. So if you want to chase after that, chase after poisons and drugs and wonder why you're unwell, do that at your, to your detriment. But I encourage you not to. I encourage you, I implore you not to. Don't be deceived by the world. They're preparing you, not only for uh, the perpetuation of Big Pharma, the hold it has on society, but for the mark of the beast. For, for acquiescing, to learn to acquiesce to uh, people who set themselves up as an authority who simply are not an authority. And they use all the posturing and all the tones of voice that they know are going to impress you and make you feel as though you ought acquiesce. But the truth of the matter is, the only one we have to bow down to is King Jesus of Nazareth. The Holy One of God is perfect in all of his ways and he holds the keys to death in Hades. Not the guards, not the judge, not the doctor, not the pharmaceutical uh, dispensary, not this, this, that, or this, the other Just Jesus himself. We're all made out of the same lump of clay, formed and knit together in our mother's womb by Jesus. So I encourage you, repent today. Don't follow after the world. Put your faith in Jesus. Don't be given to the lies of Big Pharma and the mask wearing and propaganda. Pied Piper effect. Power of suggestion. The fear mongering. The laws of attraction that they use. And the mind control techniques that they use to lead your mind down the cul-de-sac. Don't be given to all of that but rather put your faith in Jesus because they are skilled in evil and wicked crafts they're skilled in them there's no doubt about that but the truth of the matter is that that's going to dry up and they know it so they're running as fast and as long as they can it's, 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 it's horrible to watch but I'm telling you put your faith in Jesus Christ the righteous and read your Bible and listen to his voice obey his spirit obey his commands and you will find peace in his word keep your eyes on him nobody else the bible says that people will be in the new jerusalem wondering why is this is this the one who deceived the nations? Speaking of the devil. Because the Bible promises us that there will be a time where we won't need to ask questions. We won't need to. We will see Jesus as he is because we will be as he is. if we keep the faith until the moment of our death keep trusting in him keep the faith in him no matter what the enemy comes against you with spiritual weapon or whatever Jesus is infinitely greater than the devil consider that Consider who your Lord is before you choose not to follow him. The Bible says, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Choose. I choose Jesus. Adonai Elohim, Yeshua HaMashiach, which means Jesus Christ in Hebrew. Jesus means the salvation of God. In simpler terms, the rescuer. Christ means the anointed one. 
or divinely appointed or sent by God in simpler terms. So in simple terms, Jesus Christ means the rescuer sent by God. He's here to rescue you from the coming wrath. That is eternal hellfire. And the only way you can be rescued is by putting your faith in him. He is the great physician and he will restore you to health. So trust in him. Alone. Not in anything else. Not in your own strength. Not in your own understanding. Be not wise in your own eyes. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord Jesus unto everlasting life. So no, the Gardaí, right, it's good that they've said they can't uh, ask you for exemption letters and look in your medical business, and nor can a restaurant. But at the same time, they need to go one step further and actually uphold the rights of people who are trying to engage services and businesses. And not to try to wrongly empower and encourage businesses to play the whole uh, gatekeeping role again, like they did with the bus drivers. Kind of hype them up and think, let them think they have a, a role or a position in society that they don't have. Frontline workers, very important people, relevant people, very important. They hype them up in the media. Oh, pump, 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 pump them up so that when you go to the bus, you're thinking, oh, that's a relevant person. I better do what they tell me. What are they going to tell me? But, but, but we're all relevant to something. So we have to look at the law surrounding this. And the law is subject to f section 40 in every, every contract. every contract subsection subject to section 4 in every contract when you go to uh, use somebody's service you're engaging in a contract with them you're engaging in an agreement you're engaging their service when you enter into somebody's restaurant you're engaging their service and that the conditions of that service have to be reasonable and fair Like if you were asking somebody, you have to come in wearing pink Wellington boots or you can't buy your cabbage. You might, you would say, well, that's unreasonable. So you might say, ah, come on, you're being ridiculous now. Am I? Can somebody who's running a restaurant say that they have the, the relevant skills to tell you that mask wearing is harmless? What scientific studies have they done? What clinical trials have they done? So how can they then say that they're of merchantable quality and PPE to engage their services? Rather, impersonal protective equipment third party protective equipment they're protecting Sally across the thing but then when I'm going to eat my food they're no longer it's no longer protecting Sally and I've touched my mask so there's contact 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 it doesn't make any sense I keep talking about air, airborne this and airborne that but when you're wearing a mask, you're breathing. Therefore, the airflow goes out to the side. The only difference is it's going out to the side, maybe with less forward momentum, but then it's, it's staying in the air longer, potentially, because you have to take into account drafts as well in the, in the building. There are other variable factors at play. Somebody opens the door, goes to wind. Who knows where the particles go then? 
totally unreasonable behaviour. It's totally unreasonable. As though they could affect and direct the course of airflow. I mean, it's just nonsense. Subject to section 40, in every contract for the supply of a service undertakings as to where the supplier is acting in the course of a business, the following terms, quality of service, are implied. That the supplier has the necessary skills to render the service. In every contract, necessary skills to render the service. Relevant person. Well, Mr. Minister, you have broken the law in giving that command. And so too have every business who have actually carried out these conditions. They've all broken the law. And the Gardaí are breaking the law by telling businesses they have the power to break the law. Rather than upholding the rights of the citizen. If that's the case, if that's what they're now saying. And I do have a video online here where a guard is actually saying that. So I'm wondering, what's going on there? What's actually happening? It was in Kildare or something. So, um, again, on a number of a number of occasions previously, I have tried to dissuade the guardie from doing things that were unlawful. And I do, I, I do dis dissuade them again. I've, I honour them and I respect them in this. Um, I think that they should not be reneging on their commitment to their office. Um, I, I do think that their superiors shouldn't be trying to implement uh, the requests of institutions, uh, organisations that have been inconsistent in their advice. I think as Irish people we should imply, apply our own intellect um, and do our own research and see that uh, the, the vast uh, body of evidence um, shows that mask wearing is a nonsense. 
even in the instance of, of um, you know, where the surgeon would use the mask um, to prevent post-operative infection, it hasn't shown to be effective or to change the numbers of post-operative infections to reduce them. So they've been shown ineffective in that application, yet they're still worn. I suppose somebody gets paid for it, for the mask. I suppose somebody gets paid for the mask. A. The supplier has the necessary skills to render the service. B. That he will supply the service with due skill, care and diligence. That where materials are used, they will be sound and reasonably fit for the purpose which they are required. And that where goods are supplied under the contract, they will be of merchantable good quality within the meaning of Section 14.3 of the Act of 1893 inserted by Section 10. So if you want to go on and to, to check that section as well for the definition, you can. But it basically means fit for purpose. And so when something's fit for purpose, it at least does no harm, of course. They teach us from very young, safety first. Okay, so let's carry that through to when we're grown-ups employing uh, services around the place. Blessings, beloved. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. This world is um, deceived by the evil one. And we need to put our focus on Jesus Christ and return to him in faith. Blessings, beloved. Holy Christ. Praise the Lord.